Hi guys, what's going on? Welcome to another video. I hope you're all doing well today. Uh, today we have the 5v5 Inter Invitational Tournament. We've got round one versus uh, with Overlords versus KDS here. I'm going to be doing a bit of an analysis of it. Thank you to Evoke and all the other people over at Albion for allowing me to do this. Guys, go and check out the stream. It's going to be streaming today, tomorrow, the day after, and the day after that. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday is the final, so definitely make sure you're there for that one if you can't be there for the rest. Uh, so I was allowed to cast today, and it was a great experience. Shout out to Lupak for uh, co-casting with me. Um, but yeah, so I've been told I'm allowed to do the coverage, a bit of an, uh, an analytical point of view to put on the channel. So uh, yeah, here we are. We've got KDS and Overlords here. KDS are a very, very dominant team. They have been for a while. Overlords are a team that have been d very dominant in the past. Obviously, they're not particularly active right now. But again, both very, very good teams. Uh, we do see some very, very close fights coming out here as well. So uh, first up, here we go. Match one. I have actually just recorded this, so uh, my voice is actually already hurting just because I recorded it and then realized that I wasn't actually recording. So we do see the team come out. First of all, we see uh, Thesis, RS on the Clarent, Nits on the Heavy Mace, Baccarol on the one-handed Holy with all the secrets, Biohazard on the two-handed Curse, and Weed Hunter on the Scythe. On the enemy team, on the KDS team, we see Kokadu running the Heavy Mace, Keith running the Clarent, Yandel running the one-handed Holy Staff with the CC Reduction Shield and the Druid Robes, Lucky Luke running the Wishwing Bow, and Archimedes running the Holy Staff. So... What we see in this fight is Lucky Luke goes forward a little bit too much here, but he does take a lot of damage. But the second any of the Clothies take damage on the KDS team, they fall back to the choke and they are so safe. Like, the whole, like, Kokodo and Keith's job in this is just to keep their backline safe. And while they were safe, they were able to put out so much damage here that they really couldn't do anything about it. Uh, we do see the Death Curse literally just keep coming down. Like, they, they have so many Death Curses in these fights where there's just nothing able to be done about them. Weed Hunter does drop very low from it, and uh, having to pop Gigantify is just to survive at this point, but KDS, as soon as anything goes wrong, we're falling back to this choke, and I think that's such a smart move to do. There is literally nothing the Overlords team could do right now. They do try to get on the Cloth team, but as soon as they do, they drop in so low. They just don't seem to have the right mentality with this. They're trying to put too much damage and emphasis on Coco and Keith and uh, the KDS team, allowing them to just basically sit back and poke they didn't really have to go in and sort of be silly with it they knew they were safe and then they had the overlords very very low even though they tried to disengage meaning that lucky luke and uh leandor can just poke him down kill him off quite quickly uh obviously back does die there even through the gigantify uh we did actually see there that uh, Weed Hunter jumps onto Lucky Luke solo, hit him with a heavy smash and then into the bloody reap and does drop him to like 30% health so quickly. So we know the damage is there from the KDS guys, uh, sorry, from the Overlords guys onto the KDS clothies. Uh, we just wanted to see it a little bit better placed. Uh, so we do see a victory over to KDS right at the start. I think the Death Curse and the Wish Brimbo were definitely the carries in that one. Kokodu kind of just had to peel off. Uh, he didn't really have to make any big, big, massive plays. He just had to peel people off and he was pretty safe. Uh, Overlords, we talked about this on the stream. We, we wanted Overlords to really put pressure on those clothies because allowing them just to be able to sit there and relax and fight freely was really, really a bad idea for them. Uh, so I'm going to skip over to the next fight here. So we do see the first fight just occurring here, and again, we're in a very similar position. However, Nitz, Thesis, and Weed Hunt are running straight in, not letting these KDS guys get a second to breathe. Leandel and Coco already half health, Lucky Luke taking a third of his health already. Uh, there is counter pressure back onto Thesis. Leandel does pop the obsessive burst to try and get as much damage out as possible. We see Weed Hunter drop low, he's a bit out of position. Um, and Coco's trying to do what he can to get the Overlords team under control. However, the very sort of frontline heavy Overlords team realise that they just can just jump in and they're pretty safe. And uh, yeah, we see Archimedes drop really low here. He has to use the Gigantify to survive, but Keith getting a three-man mighty swing off. And he gets a couple of these off in, in these fights and it just changes the direction of a fight. You now see three Overlords members being really, really low. And uh, there's nothing they can really do about it. Uh... Archimedes does go down, Weed Hunter and Thesis together, they do so much burst that he just can't out heal it while being focused that hard. They do get, they do swap out Lucky, uh, Lucky Luke, obviously he does die there as well, but 
gets knocked down. It's not a great, but it's not the biggest deal in the world. They Overlords know that they can still clean this up. Uh, sorry, Biohazard. I actually meant to say Biohazard. That's even worse. Uh, Biohazard gets knocked down while swapping out for Lucky Luke. And uh, yeah, so Overlords realized they could win this. They won this based on completely around the fact that they focused the clothies. Archimede took so much damage and there was so much spread damage through the Clarent and the Infernal Scythe that uh, Overlords basically just won that on pressure of clothies. So uh, this is kind of what we wanted to see from them on the start. And uh, yeah, so we'll move on to the third fi and final fight of, the, uh, of this round. So we see the fight just happening here. Now what happens here, I'm just going to say, a lot of these fights, because obviously there's no caps involved, it's just a fight, it's very positional play. We saw Overlord secure the mid cap first of all, and uh, KDS realised that they can't really push up that choke and hold the choke like they did in the first fight. The second fight they were kind of tried to and it didn't work for them, so they wasted it. Um, and in the third one they realised, we're not even going to try and contest the choke, we're just going to sit back. And this is a really good idea from them. I actually really like what Lucky Luke's doing here. He's playing really forward, and anyone, anyone would think right now that Lucky Luke is trolling. What he's actually doing is baiting the poke and baiting the engage out of the Overlord's team and able to swap out poke back. And he's putting out a significant amount of damage. We see Lucky Luke gets um, snare charged, looking to win Wall in, but already manages to uh, assassin boot through. Now, this means that Nitz has burnt a lot of his tanking and defensive abilities for his team on trying to on basically a bait from KDS, and this was really strong because Nitz couldn't really do much then in the grand scheme of things. The Andal pops a, a Gigantify potion and a Druid Robes right at the start, the Obsessive Burst, just to get out some massive amounts of pressure onto the Overlord's team, and really manages to do it. He does very, very well here. Obviously, Weed Hunter and Thesis focusing on Clothies, doing a lot of damage, but KDS just are putting out counter pressure back. They they have room to fall back now because they don't have to contest that choke at all. Kokadu is just sort of wailing on people here, but he isn't really able to do much for his team, unfortunately, because... Uh, the Overlords guys are just so target focused, so tunnel focused. Now, what people don't actually realise here is if you actually look, Lucky Luke is sat. If you actually watch the rest of this fight, Lucky Luke sits in this tree line and he doesn't move really. He just picks off people, puts out damage and he's so safe doing it. This was great positional play from Lucky Luke. I wish Overlords had kind of clocked onto it sooner because he's a potential kill target. If he's out of position there, you can see Akamidi being focused back. Look at the distance between these two now. The Overlords guys could insta-swap to Lucky Luke and he would melt. But what actually happens is he's actually putting damage onto Backroll at the back. You look at Backroll just taking damage slowly. He isn't dying very quickly, but like Thesis is low here. Backroll's low and Lucky Luke's able to do all of this himself. Solo killing Backroll just because the Overlords guys didn't really pay attention. So it's very, very important here. And I believe they do lose that off that uh, single play, to be honest. So uh, again, we saw both teams do what they needed to do with their team comps. Obviously, the first round went to KDS, playing that very, very strong defensive structure for their back line. The second fight, we went in with Overlords playing the very, very invasive dive comp. Uh, and the third ones, KDS realized they couldn't hold the choke, so they sort of fell back and kited back, doing a lot of damage while they did it, and uh, took the victory. So guys... The stream's going to be on for the next three days. Obviously, it happened tonight. There's another three days to go. And on the fourth night, it will be the finals. It'll be a very hypey night. Try to be there for that, guys. Even if you can't get to the rest of them, try and be there for that one. Uh, I believe it's on Thursday, if I've got my days wrong. Right, it is on Thursday. Because I'm recording this at 1.44 in the morning. Because, like, I'm a crazy person. Um, but, yes, guys. So, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe for the channel. A big thank you again to all the Albion guys for allowing me to do this using the VODs off their channel. Um, but yeah, so uh, thank you for watching guys and uh, hope to see you on the stream while we're watching this 5v5 international, international invitational tournament. Uh, I will be doing coverage of all the other fights as well, so the more to come in the next couple of days guys. Thanks for watching and catch you later. Goodbye.